Welcome back to the Brahmin Word. And last week, we were at the Summit County Fairgrounds. Uh, we had a, uh, a table, actually, and it was a lot of fun. But because of that, uh, <laughs> because of that, some things got pushed back. <laughs> and one of them being Brahmin Word. So I do apologize about that. Uh, however, uh, we, we do want to get back to uh, the Brahmin word. So last time we, you, you and I met for the Brahmin word, we talked about the humility of Paul and the example that he gives uh, about the character trait of humility. Uh, today we are going to go back to Philippians chapter 2, uh, turn with me there to verse 19. So Philippians 2.19, uh, we're going to be seeing just two um, two believers, obviously Timothy and Paphroditus did great things for Jesus, um, but they kind of represent what does a, just what does a believer look like when they try to tackle um, humility, and what does humility look like through them? Now Timothy is a pastor. Uh, or in, in this context. Uh, so Timothy was a pastor, um, but Epaphroditus was just a church member in Philippi. Uh, so we'll see that here in just a second. So Philippians chapter 2, verse 19. Let's start there. I open the Lord Jesus to send Timothy to you soon, so that I also may be cheered by news of you. For I have no one like him who will be genuinely concerned for your welfare. For they all seek their own interests, not those of Jesus Christ. But you know Timothy's proven worth, how as a son with a father he has, ser he has served with me in the gospel. I hope therefore to send him just as soon as I see how it, go how it will go with me, and I trust in the Lord that shortly I myself will come also. So, let's break down a little bit about Timothy. So Timothy is a young man... Um, we don't know the exact age of Timothy, um, but he's definitely younger, a younger guy. So my guess is 20s, 30s, um, 40s at most, but most likely 20s and 30s. That's kind of what we're looking at. Um, and he is described as somebody that is... Um, a, an encourager that he will pass on word how the Philippian church is to Paul and that will give Paul um, that will give Paul joy uh, but it's interesting too to see who Paul hopes in he doesn't hope in Timothy he hopes in Christ that Christ would send Timothy that's the thing that I see in this passage um, that brings humility to the table I think um, it's, yes, we are called to be a part of the church and to serve those within the church and without the, uh, and outside the church. But that in itself is a task of humility, but is in the Lord that we work and that we work and who we work for. And so I think that's a really cool thing that Paul said, starts here. I hope in the Lord Jesus to send Timothy to you soon. Now, is it kind of like, oh, I hope that this happens? Yeah. But I think it's awesome to see that even in the midst of mission work, Paul is keeping um, Christ at the forefront and not what he's doing, not what Timothy's doing, and not what Epaphroditus is doing. Um, Christ and Christ's example is first and foremost. Um, but continuing with Timothy, though, he is described as very special. He's, there's no one like him. Uh, and the reason why is because he's genuinely concerned for your welfare. And that shows humility. He's not about, okay, how am I going to further my own ministry? How am I going to further my own name? No, he is specifically he is specifically interested in the welfare of the Philippian church. Um, and not only that, but he goes against uh, what some of the false teachers were doing that day. In verse 21, for they all seek their own interests, not those of Jesus Christ, that they, I'm thinking, 
is referring to false teachers. So what does that mean? It, it means that these false teachers are looking for gain, whether it's monetarily, whether it is fame, and, and, and uh, that their name is, is put forward, not Christ, necessarily. Um, but I think that's what's going on there. But then it go, it, but then he goes even deeper into Timothy's character. But you know Timothy's proven worth. How is a son with a father? He has served with me in the gospel. So even though Timothy is not on the same maturity level as Paul, Paul treats Timothy as a fellow worker in the gospel. And that's how we should treat each other in the church. Uh, just because... I'm a pastor just because Rick is a pastor, just because John is our uh, is a pastor uh, at our church. That doesn't mean that we are more important. It means that we just have we spend yeah we spend a little bit more time at the church, but that doesn't mean that we that we're more important. The work that you all put into our local church by serving and by loving and by uh, giving your time and, and your and and your um, by giving up your time and your money and uh, anything like that to help serve the folks in our church and those that are not in our church at the moment all of that is equally as important um, because the the church is seen as the body of Christ. So there's no one part or no one person that is bigger than the other. And so I think that's really important to see there. And I'm glad that Paul points that out in verse 22. Uh, and then he just, he really, he reiterates the fact that he is still in prison um, in, in verses 23 and 24, uh, but he's hoping to get out um but uh, but that's kind of where that goes. And then we see the switch to Epaphroditus. And Epaphroditus is not mentioned really anywhere else. It's pretty much here. And yet it is this beautiful picture of the importance and value of the local church, but also humility as well uh, with the person of um uh, with a person and character of Epaphroditus. So, verse 25, let's pick that up. I thought it necessary to send to you Epaphroditus, my brother, and fellow worker, and fellow soldier, and your messenger and minister to my need. So first off, wow, that's a lot of encouragement. Now, you could be saying, why does he describe Epaphroditus in so many more descriptions than he does Timothy? Well, for, in, for, for one, uh, Epaphroditus himself is Philippian. Like he's, he's from Philippi. And so this is an ode, uh, basically it, it's an encouragement to the Philippian church to support and to encourage brothers and sisters in Christ that are like Epaphroditus. Encourage them, support them. Uh, you want brothers and fellow sisters. You want fellow workers, fellow soldiers, um, mes messengers, ministers to need uh, in the community, you want folks like that in your church. And that's kind of what Paul is getting at with all these descriptions for Epaphroditus in verse 25. Uh, but let's see what he does, though. Verse 26, For he has been longing for you all and has been distressed because you heard that he was ill. Indeed, he was ill, near to death. But God had mercy on him, and not only on him, but on me also, lest I should have sorrow upon sorrow. So basically, Epaphroditus was kind of think of like, kind of think of it like a care package. Epaphroditus was bringing a care package from the Philippian church, the local church, to the Apostle Paul, knowing that he's in house arrest, and so he's bringing this care package to Paul. And on the way, something happens. We don't know the illness. Uh, but something happens to him, and not only does he get sick, but he gets very sick, like near-to-death type of sickness, uh, as we see in the first part of verse 27. Um, and Paul, in verse 27, at the end of it, basically says, I'm so glad uh, that the Lord healed him, um, 
not for just for his sake, but for my sake, because Paul, can you imagine the guilt that Paul would have felt if Epaphroditus, on the way to give this pair, care package uh, to Paul, dies en route? I mean, it just, that would rack your brain, wouldn't it? Um, and so that's what Paul is kind of getting out there at the end of verse 27. Uh, but here's the part where it gets really, really beautiful, the picture of the local church. And verse 28, I am the more eager to send him, therefore, that you may rejoice at seeing him and again seeing him again, and that I may be less anxious. So receive him in the Lord with all joy and honor such men, for he nearly died for the work of Christ, risking his life to complete what was lacking in your service to me. So it's really, really cool to see the value that Paul has on the local church. Yes, don't get me wrong. Believers in general are important. Uh, no matter where they go to church, we're all brothers and sisters in Christ. Don't get me wrong. That's incredibly important. But there is something about a local church that is just beautiful to behold. And Epaphroditus, even in the midst of all this sickness, uh, to the point where he almost died, has heard that his that his, uh, that his church misses him. And he longs to go back to not just his community, but his local church. And that shows you the value that Epaphroditus has of his local church. Um, and that's beautiful to see. That's so, so beautiful to see. And I, and I hope and pray that we view our local churches that we are attending as precious and as treasures like that. Yes, I understand that the church is not everything, but there is something about gathering together and worshiping and, and learning about the Lord that you just, you, you can't beat. <laughs> like, there's nothing, there's nothing better than that um, when it comes to feeling a, a part of the local church. There's nothing better than that. And so it's a beautiful picture, and I love to see that uh, with Epaphroditus and just the humility that he has to go and to uh, be a missionary, basically, to be a missionary to Paul uh, on behalf of, of his local church in Philippi. Uh, what beautiful picture that is. So with that, we are... Going to continue on uh, with how to think in a godly manner, in a Christ-like manner, as we go through the book of Philippians. We'll go to chapter 3, uh, verse 1 next. However, uh, next time I see you, I will be in the mountains in North Carolina. Uh, so I'm hoping to have a beautiful backdrop for you instead of my house. <laughs> um, I'm hoping to have a beautiful backdrop for you. Uh, but more importantly, we're going to dive into uh, we're going to dive into Philippians chapter three as we continue uh, to look at uh, what it means to think, um, what it means to think in a Christ-like manner. And we're really going to be thinking about faith next uh, next time on Thursday. We're really going to be thinking about what does it mean to have faith in Christ. So I will see you then as I will be in the mountains in North Carolina. However, I'll see you tomorrow with Robin Word as well. Thanks.